Okay, I think it's about time. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. All right. Um, welcome to Reba Worship this morning. Um, and we are uh, here at the Ministry Center, Carl and I, Charlotte Lehman, pastor here at Reba, my husband Carl. Uh, glad to be here at the Ministry Center to broadcast our worship this morning. Um, and we're uh, let's see we're we're getting started with uh, new folks working around on the back end too so uh, we'll uh, we're really appreciative of more people stepping in so that our faithful ones who've been doing it will not burn out um, so this is the time when we want to spotlight the one video so one video ends up filling the screen just so that um, and all right there we go Anyway, um, <clears throat> we'll begin with the lighting of our Christ candles together. So if you have a candle in your location, this would be a good time to light it. And I will light ours here, not because we are invoking the presence of Jesus or of God or the Spirit that wouldn't be here otherwise, but because we remind ourselves that Amen. God is here with us according to God's promise. Amen. This is the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And I'll try to keep an eye on the candle so we don't let it tip too much uh, today. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Well, Let's uh, begin the rest of our worship with a reading from Psalm 116. One of the, uh, the little inserts in my Bible here says, Thanksgiving for recovery from an illness, mm -hmm. um, which this psalm may speak to more than just that uh, concern, but it seemed an appropriate one in this time when we're all facing the threat of illness. Some of us are in illness, which may be a COVID-19 or it may be something else. Um, so let's just listen to the words of one person who was wrestling with faith uh, in the time of struggling with illness. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, Lord, you saved me. Return, O oh my Lord, to your rest, O oh my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before you, Lord, in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said, I'm greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone's a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all your bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on your name, O Lord. I will pay my vows to you, Lord, in the presence of all your people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on your name, O Lord. I will pay my vows to, the, to you, Lord, in the presence of all your people. 
in the courts of the house of you, Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Yes. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God within us, for the word of God among us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. We will have at the end of our uh, service today a time of sharing of joys and challenges as we have been before. So I just wanted to mention that so you can uh, remember and be able to use uh, the chat function uh, to send us in your joys and challenges so that we can all share in praying for them and celebrating with you together. Um, and I'll just mention here in case you're wondering, we are having a uh, our technology is doing a strange, unexpected thing this week and is not letting us stream to Facebook, um, even though the settings are all there to do so. Um, so we will get the recording of this and uh, post it uh, online um, later in the week. So if anyone is trying to log on through Facebook as well, um, sorry we were not able to do that this uh, right now live, but we will get it up there later. So. All right, would you bow your hearts together with me in prayer? God, we thank you that um, once again we can just come together in this time set aside to realign our hearts with you, to reconnect with one another, to know that we are not alone on the journey of seeking you and your ways, of wanting to go deeper of wanting to be your kind of people in the world, God. The kind of people who love you and love their neighbor as themselves. The kind of people who are thinking about your big picture, Lord. The kind of people who know they're loved deeply. And so we don't have to be defensive or uh, stingy, but we can rest in your care. So, God, we ask that you would make your presence manifest to each of us now, that each of us would be able to recognize your love and your care within us and around us, in our homes, in our relationships, and even in the midst of great trials, God, that we would find you, our suffering servant, Savior, walking with us and showing us the way forward in faithfulness and into your healing, your light, your provision, your glory. So bless this worship in your name, Lord Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Let's, um, we have some wonderful music. And the first piece was uh, offered to us uh, today from the Garrett Korean Choir, students at Garrett who have put together uh, this beautiful hymn from Psalm 23. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
praise team you gave us the hope and uh, what a, a joy to have our music made for this time thank you
Amen. 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 Thank you to praise team, especially Amen. Wolf, but especially Doug Jones, who's putting in so much of his skill to help us prepare music yeah. that works Amen. for this time and technology in our life together. We really appreciate yes. it so Thank much. You. So speaking of appreciating one another and remembering one another, let's take our time now to text or email or write a note to pass the peace of Christ to one another. Um, you may use the ancient words of, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Or you may write a blessing of your own inspiration. So let us pass the peace to one another. Amen. When morning chills still lingers in the air, Amen. Thank you so much uh, to uh, Cassidy, Jess, and uh, Delaney for that beautiful piece. Um, mm -hmm. And Sherry Iverson, who wrote it. Yes, uh, okay. So you'll see on the screen there. Oh, you can put it back up. Thanks. Uh, you see on the screen the ways that you can donate. You could go to the RebaPlaceChurch.org website, or you can mail a uh, check in the old-fashioned way to the church office and thank you for many of you have been doing that and we have received um, uh, quite a lot of money into the uh, COVID relief fund which are we are working at distributing now mm -hmm. and also just to sustain the regular uh, work of the church and um, it's also a good time to just mention again that our Operation Hospitality, which is the upgrading of our bathrooms in the meeting house to full Americans with Disabilities Act compliance, um, yes. and adding a, a gender neutral family bathroom. Um, so we're so excited about those ways to provide for um, the dignity of all of our people, everyone that we want to be welcomed in our meeting house when someday, yes, we will gather again in our meeting house. Not for a little while yet, but 
we'll be paying attention to that. Um, so thank you. But I'm not asking for money for that at this point because all the money has been raised for that yes, and several grants. So we're just spending it. And some people are, are being able to have work in order to do that. So, yes, amen. Um, so we're just grateful for all of God's provision. And as we continue to think about our gratitude for God's provision, uh, let's enjoy this version of the doxology. I'm thankful that people are hearing my request to sing the doxology and send it in so you don't have to just hear me. And this one is an angel choir that's in the form of uh, a bunch of women at the greenhouse household. So mm -hmm. let's hear from them as they sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God You, would you bow your hearts with me in prayer? God, we thank you so much for the way you have been providing for us. Uh, and we ask that you would give assurance and comfort and love and tangible provision to all those who are in, yes, still in Jesus. need of it in various ways, God. Yes, Jesus. Whether it's groceries or work or uh, rent or just... Uh, a call at the right time, a word of encouragement uh, in this time of so much isolation. Indeed, help us to be feeling your spirit's touch and anointing for how we can remember to connect with one another, to reach out when we're in need and to remember others and reach out to them. We thank you, God, for you are good all the time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. <clears throat> uh, and let's go to Ruth Ann Friesen, who is going to read our gospel text for us. All right. All right. I'm reading from... Matthew 6, 5 to 18, it's all about prayer and fasting. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 
But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrite, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. We praise your name, Lord Jesus. This is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Ruthann. We really appreciate that. And now I'm, I'm really happy to say we are, um, our speaker for today who's bringing the message is a newer attender at Reba, Nader Sayuni. Nader and his wife, Mary Jean, uh, have been attending at Reba since sometime last year. But you know, around Reba, we tend to talk about it being newer unless you've been here like about seven or years or something like that. So sorry about that. Um, anyway, we're really glad to have Nader and Mary Jean uh, with us. And uh, Nader is a counselor, a spiritual director, and he works for the Office of Spiritual Foundations at University Christian Fellowship. And we got to talking, and Carl and I have been getting to know uh, Nader and Mary Jean quite a bit. And I just felt like. Um, there's a lot of stuff about prayer that it would be really uh, great to uh, hear uh, from Nader about in this message. So we'll, without further ado, turn it over to Amen. him. <clears throat> Lord, bless his words to us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charlotte. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I feel uh, so privileged to be sharing with all of you today. As you just heard, um, my name is Nader Sahuni, and one of the first things people are thinking when they hear my name is, what kind of a name is Nader Sahuni? Well, let's start with that. I'm originally from the Middle East. I was born in Cairo to a Lebanese family and grew up in Beirut. I came to the U.S. when I was 14 years old, and we lived just a few blocks from where most of you live. Uh, we lived at Seward and Elmwood in Evanston. And living so close to Reba, Somehow we got invited to a Reba Place home for our first American Thanksgiving. So whoever hosted us some 40 years ago, if you're still here, a heartfelt thank you uh, for my first Thanksgiving. Today I'm gonna be sharing with you about personal prayer. It's a topic that I'm personally passionate about. And over time, as I've tried to pass on some of my excitement and my passion over personal prayer to others, I've noticed that there are some obstacles that are fairly common, they keep coming up. And some of these I will address out of the scripture today and some from my graduate school research. Of course, I can't cover it all, so we're just going to focus on one or two things today. But um, if you want to talk more anytime, please feel free to reach out. In today's scripture, there is one verse that has two things that we often miss. In Matthew 6, 6, Jesus says, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. The first thing in that verse that I wanna focus on is that God is inviting us to a personal dedicated time of prayer. This is not to be confused with the altogether different discipline of praying at all times. Very often when I begin talking with someone about prayer, their response is that, hey, I talk with God all through the day. And that's very good, of course, but it is a different practice than setting aside a time of direct and attentive connection that Jesus is describing here. It's mixing apples and oranges. The second thing that we see in this verse 
is that God rewards personal prayer. We don't often think about this because we tend to view salvation as a binary event. We die and go be with Jesus, and we all experience the same reality of the joy of heaven. We tend to think that we all uh, will experience being with Jesus with the same level of joy and intimacy. It's kind of like maxing out on your social security benefits. Once you reach the maximum, that's it. Everyone gets an equal amount. No matter how much more money you make or how much more years you work, once you reach the maximum, that's all you get. That is not what Jesus taught, however. Jesus taught a lot about rewards. There are things that we can do in this life that will create a better reality for us in the life to come. And one of these things, as we see in today's scripture, is private personal prayer. God says he rewards that. I don't know about you, but what's happening around us today with the coronavirus is a stark reminder to me that we cannot count on the rewards of this life. As I mentioned, I was born in Egypt, a Lebanese family that had been in that country for two generations. My parents met in Cairo and were married and they had my two older sisters and then I came along. But around the time of my birth, uh, things were becoming less and less comfortable for foreigners there. Most foreigners ended up leaving Egypt. My parents left when I was less than a year old. They lost their livelihoods and they had to begin life over again in Beirut. In Beirut, 11 years later in 1975, the Lebanese Civil War began and my parents lost everything again um, because we ended up fleeing our home and it was occupied by squatters. What they had invested in for the last 12 years was gone. Fortunately not, fortunately, not long after that, we were blessed to have the opportunity to immigrate to the States. My dad came to the US at age 48 and he had to restart his career all over again. He had to work two full-time entry-level jobs to support us. The idea then that the world is not as stable as it looks is part of my family's memory. And for many of you though, you have similar experiences of the world not being a stable place. Certainly the situation today with the pandemic is a great reminder that all, we think, all that we think is stable may not be that stable after all. We can invest in our family relationships, but there's no guarantee that our families will be what we hope. We can invest in physical health with unrelenting exercise and a great diet, neither of which I'm very good at, but all it takes is one bad lab result to change everything forever. So if we don't have guarantees of rewards in all these things, I'm not saying we shouldn't do them, I think we should obviously, but um, the guarantees just aren't there. My argument is that we do have a guarantee though of rewards in the words of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I tend to take him at his word. Now, I can't tell you that these what these rewards will be, uh, or what they will look like, but I can tell you that I'm sure they will be there. And even though I can't tell you for sure what they'll look like, I have a guess as to what they might be. I think that as we invest in prayer, it grows our hearts towards intimacy with God. Eugene Peterson says that prayer is more than us speaking to God and listening to him. It's a space where God actually works in us and on us to transform us. You see, sometimes I think we get so busy doing God's work that we forget that he's more interested in the transformation of our hearts. And one of the primary ways that he transforms us is as we spend time with him. The reward then is an increased ability to receive more of God's love and to be transformed by it. And this not only happens for us to, as a reward in the life to come, the reward of transformation starts here. Now there is some evidence for that in research that I referenced a lot in my work in grad school. It was a large study called Reveal it is based on a model of spiritual growth that describes four basic levels of spiritual development in our relationship with God. People start out at stage one, they go to stage two, and then stage three, and then stage four. And what this study found is that there are different variables that are associated with helping people transition from stage one to stage two, and then from two to three, and then three to four. In some stages, small groups are really important. 
In other stages, they might be less important. In some stages, service is very important. In other stages, they're less important. But there is one variable, however, and only one that is consistently correlated with growth across all four stages, across our whole journey with God, and that is our personal sp spiritual practices, praying and reflecting on scripture. Once again, we're not talking about praying throughout the day. We're talking about taking time out on a regular basis to spend time with Jesus. Now, what that prayer looks like as we grow changes. And the study confirmed that too. Personal prayer looks different from the earlier to the later stages. How we prayed when we first came to Christ is different than how we pray 10 years later and even more different 20 or 30 years later. That's no surprise, of course. In my experience though, what is surprising is that there are not many places we can go to learn how to pray differently at these different stages. So that's part of why I decided to focus my seminary research uh, when I was in grad school on how to help grow, help, how to help people grow in their personal prayer lives. At the time that I was uh, doing that research, my wife, my wife Mary Jean and I were helping with a church plant in Chicago that was almost exclusively attended by young adults in their 20s. So I decided to see what the impact of mentoring some of them in prayer might look like, to investigate what kind of struggles they're having, how I can best help them to get unstuck in these struggles in their prayer lives. And what I found is that what they struggle with is really not all that different from people of other ages that I've come across. I found three main areas where they are most often stuck and they needed to transition to a healthier place. Unfortunately, I don't have time today to focus on all three of those, so I thought we would just look at one. The one I'm gonna look at today is that these young people, and many others I speak with, are often stuck in a mentality of task and obligation, and they need to make a transition to a sense of invitation and relationship. I can't tell you how many times I hear the comparison that prayer is like going to the gym. It's something that is hard, requires effort, and is the epitome of delayed gratification. That's not entirely wrong, of course. Going to the gym is a good thing and has great benefits for us, and certainly that is true of prayer as well. They both require intentionality, and we're generally glad afterwards that we did either one. But before we go much further with the analogy, let's stop for a second, if you don't mind. How does it sound to you if I say something like, I know that having dinner with my wife every day is good for me. So even though it's hard and takes effort, I do it anyway because I know it's good for me. Do you see the dissonance there? Certainly it's better to have dinner with my wife than not to, but if I'm seeing having dinner with my wife, like going to the gym, I'm having a blind spot about marriage that you could fit a semi truck in. Marriage is not a task, it's a relationship of life-giving love. And if I'm not seeing it or experiencing it like that, it's probably a good idea for me to talk with someone that can help me make some changes. Seeing prayer like going to the gym is an example of seeing it as a task. And that needs to be changed into an enjoyable time of relationship with God, at least in most cases. The other side of that coin is that we see prayer as an obligation rather than an invitation. Usually these obligations come from well-meaning teachings we've heard and modeling we've seen from others that was either bad modeling or maybe it was good modeling and we interpreted it wrongly. I was once talking with this former pastor about his struggles in prayer and he kept insisting that he should be praying for an hour a day first thing in the morning. And I kept wondering where he got this idea for one hour a day first thing in the morning. Finally, I asked him where did it come from? And it turns out that the person who was his senior pastor right out of seminary in his first job, who had been a mentor to him, and he told him that it was non-negotiable, that that's something that was part of what we're called to do. So this poor guy was stuck with this notion of that's what his prayer life should look like through all the seasons of his life. Now, don't get me wrong. I think most people who do pray an hour, they do so because they love it, and I'm all for it. But I haven't found many people who keep on doing it consistently who don't find it life-giving at least not yet anyway. What I encourage this guy to do is what I encourage everyone to do, and that is to ask God for what he is inviting him into prayer. What is he inviting you into prayer in this season of your life? 
I know that in my own life, there were periods where I was overambitious in my prayer life. You know, I'd read some book and I'd get really excited and set some big goals. And, you know, God told me at least on one occasion that he did want me to pray, but that the big goal, that was not from him. And it didn't fit into the life he gave me at the time or the one he wanted for me. There, are, there were other times, you know, where God said, you know, Nader, I think you could definitely benefit by spending a little more time with me than you're doing right now. I don't know your situation. I don't know what God is inviting you into, but I do know you can ask him. And when you do, you get a clear personal invitation for what he wants for you in this particular season in your life. Maybe it's one hour a day. Maybe it's 30 minutes. Maybe it's only five days a week. I don't know. But maybe you can ask him and find out. Finally, uh, if you're interested in more suggestions about developing a, like a life-giving prayer practice, you can check out a website I've created. Um, it has some fictional correspondence with a spiritual director about prayer. It's at myspiritualdirector.com. All one word, myspiritualdirector.com. Thank you, and thanks again for Thanksgiving of 1978, everyone. Thank you so much, Nader. We really appreciate you sharing your uh, insights and experience there. And uh, I hope a lot of people will check out that My Spiritual Director. I, I looked at it too, and it's really kind of fun. It's like the positive counterpart to the screw tape letters, but of <laughs> C.S. Lewis wrote a fictional thing. Um, but it's a, uh, I think people will find it a valuable tool. Um, so that's great. So let's take just a moment, a couple of minutes to reflection about prayer for us. And for that, we have another song from our wonderful praise team standing in the need of prayer. It's a me, it's a me, it's a me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's a me, it's a me, it's a me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my mama or my papa, but me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my mama or my papa, but me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's a me, it's a me, it's a me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's a me, it's a me, it's a me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother or my sister, but me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother or my sister, but me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's a me, it's a me, it's a me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's a me, it's a me, it's a me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my pastor or my deacon, but me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my pastor or my deacon, but me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's a me, it's a me, it's a me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's a me, it's a me, it's a me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Amen. Amen. Thanks again Thank to our praise team. And this was like a men's quartet we ended up having there with Ken in the lead and other voices singing with him. So thanks mm -hmm. so much for that time of reflection. All right. Well, it's time for our sharing of joys and challenges. Um, so you can use your chat function for that. And Carl and I will move up closer so we can see the chat function here better. You have to discharge your... Trying not to shock my computer into not knowing what to do here. Okay, there we go. All right. 
So if you have a um, concern or a joy that you want to share, uh, you can put it in the chat. And if the hosts and all would help me to make sure we catch them all, that would be great. Um, first, I'm going to just go ahead and mention some concerns that I know about from the week that have been sent out to our prayer chain. Um, and if anyone knows updates, you can uh, share them there as well. So one is that uh, Sherry Iverson shared that her mother, who's 95 years old, does has been tested positive for COVID. She's hospitalized in Connecticut, but as of Friday, she was pretty stable and doing well on like not too aggressive of a treatment needed, like she wasn't on a ventilator at that time. Um, so we're grateful for that and she's at peace you know she's ready to be home with Jesus if it's her time but you know we don't want anyone to go before it's their time we want them to live out the fullness of their days in joy and not in fear uh, so we will um, we will continue to pray for uh, Sherry's mom and I'll just mention a couple of things and then kind of pray one prayer over all that together um, Linda Hart's uh, brother-in-law, her sister's husband, uh, died in a terrible fall. I believe he was trimming branches or something and fell and died. Um, and Linda went down to Tampa, Florida, drove all the way down to help her sister, who also has quite a number of other challenges, health challenges herself. So it's a really difficult situation. Mm -hmm. So we really want to be lifting up um, uh, to... Uh, lifting up Linda and Brad, who uh, is supporting her from afar from Chicago. Um, and so let's uh, take a, um, let me, oh, and I see here on the chat window that Megan Herring says she has a floater in her left eye. It should go away on its own, but uh, she would appreciate healing for that. So I'm gonna take a moment now to pray for all of those things I've just mm -hmm. mentioned, and then uh, we'll catch others. Mm -hmm. Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can come to you with all of our concerns. Nothing is too small. We don't have to feel afraid that you're not gonna care, that you're too busy, that we can't get an appointment with you because you're God. Um, but you are capable and desirous of uh, meeting with us. You, and in fact, you invite us and Jesus has invited us, as Nader has pointed out, into taking that time uh, dedicated to our relationship with you in one way or another, and creatively thinking about what fits in our lives to do that. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, but here we are as a community coming before you um, to bring these concerns of uh, those of us in our midst who mm -hmm. have them. So, Lord, we lift up Sherry's mother. Uh, we ask for your peace, your blessing, your healing, your comfort to her and to Sherry and her sisters mm -hmm. as they're, of course, not allowed to visit at this time. Um, but we pray that uh, Sherry's mom would get good care and that she would recover and live out the fullness of her days in joy, uh, whatever that is to be, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we pray for Linda's, Linda Hart's sister uh, and for Linda and her other yes, siblings Lord. who are caring for her and for Brad. Uh, Lord, may you give grace and peace to this uh, Linda's sister who's lost her husband. May she mm -hmm. know uh, your presence with her, Lord. I don't, I don't know what a relationship with you is like now, but we know that you know her, you know her name, yes, you love her. And would you make your presence and your love manifest to her, whether it's through Linda or through others around her, help them to figure out practically how to deal with all of the various concerns that are now arisen um, and keep them safe and uh, bring Linda safely home to Brad and to us as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Lord, we also lift up Megan Herring and we ask for healing for her eye, uh, that her vision would be completely unimpaired, that yes, there would Lord. be no pain, that she would not feel anxious, and that mm -hmm. this would just dissolve and pass harmlessly uh, out of her system, mm -hmm. and uh, she would be just celebrating your goodness there. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. Uh, let's see. Um, Jessica Iverson, Iverson says she was blessed by her roommates organizing a birthday video of Reba friends and family singing We With You Joy. And she's put the link out there so uh -huh. anyone can watch it. That's great. The We Wish You Joy song. We missed that. We can't really sing 
together unless we use a lot of technology to do it. So that's so great. If you have a birthday, you can click on that link and, and get your We Wish You Joy song. Yes, that's a great thing. Thank you for sharing that, Jess. Um, and we have from the Varela family, please pray for Peter's grandpa on his dad's side who's been in the hospital since last week. He went in with heart complications and had Oh, uh, I must have lost my place. Thank you. And had a pacemaker put in, but hasn't recovered well. They found bleeding in his brain now, and he remains in the hospital. Mm. Okay, so that's a pretty heavy sounding situation. Let's take this moment to pray mm. for yes, Peter's Lord. grandpa. Uh, dear Jesus, you are the great yes, physician, the great healer, and we ask that you would just move into Peter's grandpa's brain and body yes, and uh, bring peace to all his mm -hmm. cells just that mm -hmm. mind body and spirit he would uh, feel your spirit moving in him that he would know that in you he lives and moves and has his being and we pray for healing we pray for wisdom for all the medical providers caring for him in every mm -hmm. way we pray that you would protect him from any infections COVID or otherwise while he's hospitalized that he would uh, just feel strengthened and at peace and well cared for. We pray for Peter and his parents and their whole family as they are concerned about him, that you would give them peace and wisdom and uh, a special anointing, Lord, yes, Lord. Uh, how to pray even for him. Yes, so Lord. Uh, pray that you would make your presence known to Peter's grandpa, that he would feel you're with him and not mm -hmm. be afraid no matter what happens. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. All righty. Um, seeing that Natalie says she start, prays she started a new job online with mm. Trilogy Behavioral Health. Yay for God's Yay. provision of yes. work. That's Amen. wonderful. Happy to hear that. And Ann Stewart says, so grateful for the teaching today. Um, mm. And by the way, positive feedback for the teaching is really helpful. Yes. <laughs> and I... Uh, if I haven't posted it, I'm going to post the service. I think I posted it for last week's service where Ann Stewart did a wonderful homily before mm -hmm. communion, um, has now uh, posted online so you can see it since the Facebook connection has been being finicky um, and we haven't been able to go through, but you can, um, you can see it that way if you missed it last week. All right. Um, and... Amy Lipschultz says, praising God for all the healing that God has been doing for me emotionally and psychologically from past traumas. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. That's great. Just because something happened in the past doesn't mean God can't go there because God is outside Amen. of time. Amen. Amen. And Russ and Pat Harris send blessings and greetings to everyone. <laughs> and Laura Lee Sue says, I really appreciated the teaching. Thank you, Nader. Yes, and me too. Yeah, <laughs> and so do Carl and I. That was fantastic. Um, the Nestor Detweiler has mentioned that a number of school celebrations this are on Zoom this week. Yes, I imagine there's a lot of graduating going on on Zoom. Zoom graduating. Yes, so congratulations to all the students yes. who finished their course of study or even just yes. this year or this term of study under such difficult conditions. Brianna Bergeron just finished college. Oh, wow, weeks, yes. So that's one. But I have a nephew more. who just graduated out in Pennsylvania. So I know a lot of people. It's... It's hard when your senior year has been disrupted by this and you didn't get to have all the fun traditional events that you expected, but we congratulate you and appreciate you, including Alex Roberson, uh, graduating Alex. from high school. Woohoo! Congratulations to Alex. Alex. All right. Um, and okay. Uh, let's see. Carl has a sharing that we mentioned last week and now he does have the notes for it. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Many of you know Carol Halesha and know that her mother died several weeks ago from COVID. And I had been, uh, I talked with her a bit about that. And <clears throat> she wanted me to share, just that she thought, it, she thought it would be encouraging and inspiring for our community just to share about her experience during that process. So some notes from my conversation with Carol. I have felt God's presence with me constantly ever since mom tested positive and we started this last vigil. The night she died, I spent the whole night praying. In the middle of the night, I sensed God's presence like he was standing in the room with me. I felt like God was right there in my living room with me. I just felt him there. I felt like I was wrapped in God's arms. I felt surrounded by God's presence. At one point, I felt like God was putting his hands on my head. I could actually feel the physical sensation of God's hands on my head. 
The whole experience was one of the most powerful encounters with God that I've ever had. I felt like God told me, as clear as if he was standing in front of me, that my mom would be with him by morning. I went to sleep at 5 a.m., and, and, and then I was woken by the page that mom had died. Mom was so ready to go. She wanted to go. I have total peace about the whole situation. I feel total peace. I feel so grateful for everything, for how everything happened. So just, we thank you for the truth, the, the good news. Death has lost its sting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, as I said, Kara wanted me, wanted me to share that with the rest of our community. She thought that would be encouraging, as it certainly is for me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. And uh, we continue to just encourage everyone to reach out if you yourself are sick or mm -hmm. just in need of connection or in need of practical uh, assistance um, or you're out of work. Um, uh, we do have the, the deacons are working and, and uh, to distribute our COVID relief fund as well as the regular deacons assistance fund. Um, and they can explain to you all how that works. There is a, a deacons assistance online form now that you can fill out. It's, uh, it's going to be in the it has been in the 24 seven newsletter, which comes out on Fridays and it'll just be in there every week for you to find. Uh, so if you're getting that, you can just pull up an old 24 seven and you'll find the link in there. And if you don't have that, you can email the church office and uh, that would be a good way uh, to get it. Um, so let's see, do we get anything else here? Oh yes. Laura Lee yes. saying prayer for Carl's throat. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, if you want all to continue to do that, Carl has been continuing to make uh, short video teaching segments about Emmanuel prayer, which is, uh, you know, another, yet another different form of praying uh, for connecting with the uh, intimate presence of God. And uh, so he's really been Pray for my it. throat. As you can hear, yeah. pray for my, prayer for my throat is still needed. Yeah. Thank you. So I'll take a moment to do that yes. now. Um, Jesus, thank you so much for Carl and how he uses his voice to try to bless so many and especially to teach people to connect with you. And I, mm. But I know whether or not he was doing that, Lord, I just believe you and your mercy and your goodness and love would want to heal his throat. So would you do that? Would you guide him in any other ways, things to do, ways mm -hmm. to care for that, Lord? You know, he's searched high and low, but if you have... Some other things for him, Lord, we pray you would give him that wisdom. Mm -hmm. And we pray that you would just come in and give him peace and a good rhythm of rest and work uh, so that uh, you can enable him to speak and use his voice in all the ways you want to glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm, thank you, sweetheart. You're welcome. All right. Um, and Joy Jones notes that the bluebells are more blue than ever in her house in the 800 block of Reba that you might want to go walk by. It's on the we did yesterday. south side of the street. Uh, and the white trillium are blooming but fading, and the red trillium are just now starting to bloom. So this little wonderful springtime report has been brought to you <laughs> at the Jones house, and they will in, uh, you will enjoy seeing it. Um, the kind of flowers that Joy's talking about kind of change from like a darker purple to a blue as they open. Bluebell. Yes, they're really interesting in that way. So it's a fun sight to see. Okay. Um, there will be again the prayer meeting this coming week um, at 630. So watch for that uh, link to be sent out on Wednesday. Uh, if you are uh, interested in attending that, that is a, a Zoom meeting, so you can go in and rather than just have like one person speaking like a, a webinar or a conference, everybody is fully present there and can share their concerns and pray for one another. So you are invited to join in that meeting. If you want, watch for the link on Wednesday. And if you're not on the church email list and so you're not getting all these things, send uh, your email 
to the church office. So yes, thank you. So rpcoffice at gmail.com, send an email there and ask to be put on the church email list. And then you will get the rebite on Wednesday, which is just a short little few bites of information and pictures. And the 24 seven on Friday with more of the classified ads and lots of other information as well. Um, so you'll wanna be on those uh, lists. And if you have prayer requests, again, use the RPC prayer or send it to me, pass church at gmail and we will be praying for you uh, we want to support one another in this time and mm -hmm. we of course continue to be sad and ache for uh, being able to be present mm -hmm. fully together physically mm -hmm. in one place and we look forward to that someday um, but we will be continuing to watch all of the important metrics of mm -hmm. when it's safe to gather in those kind of numbers and meanwhile uh, we ask that everybody just really help to, to stay in connection with one another by mm -hmm. sending out that note or calling someone mm -hmm. um, uh, waving <laughs> waving from a six foot distance and wearing your mask i forgot to bring my i have mine here because i wore it to get to the ministry center but we do encourage you um, wear those masks so that we can be together. <laughs> um, so it's a blessing. <clears throat> um, all right. Thank you uh, for all, all the items that you're sharing. And uh, let's have our benediction and putting out our candle. Back. <laughs> Oops. We're barking each other. Okay, let's pray. May the peace of Christ go with you. May the power of the Holy Spirit enable you to continue strong, even when you're feeling weak, discouraged, isolated, or afraid. May the Spirit give you the comfort of knowing God's presence with you. May you know the great creativity of of our creator who made us and be able to creatively address the situations in which you find yourself. And may you know the love of God that you can't escape, that you can't earn, that you can't lose. Yes, Lord. That all of us, no matter what we do, are surrounded behind and before, above and below by the love of God. So God, may you help us all to live from that knowledge. Mm -hmm. because we are rich in your love. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And putting out our candle, we are still in this Easter season of putting out our candle. So as we put this out, we have our little uh, liturgy to say here. Even in the dark, Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Amen. All right. And now, for those who would like, we would love to just turn on as many videos in a gallery view, unspotlighted to me. And uh, let's just enjoy uh, seeing one another's faces and greeting one another. And you Hugs can use everybody. You can use the chat window to greet people specifically or individually. So it's great. And thank you so much, Nader, for your message yeah, today. Hi, Mary was, Jean. Was, Hi. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, privileged. All right. Let me switch to a gallery view here so that we can do that. All right. Terrific. It's it's mm. great. Um, we love that uh, so many people who are far away are able to join us in worship now. Like hi, Abby Brooksbird. It's yeah, great to hug for Abigail, far away. <laughs> it's great to have you. Uh, I assume you're in Texas. <laughs> it's wonderful to have you. Um, hey, there she is. Hey, hey Abby. Mm -hmm. It's so good to have you. Thank you for singing. Abby was one of the voices on oh, the man. greenhouse that doxology was, today. That was <laughs> which I thought did sound like an angel choir. Mm -hmm. And happy birthday, Jess. And yes, happy birthday. Hi, Delaney and Cassidy you, we as well. We wish you joy on your birthday, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I just I thought that um, folks would enjoy seeing other people singing. Mm -hmm. And yes, please listen to that if your birthday has passed or is coming up. <laughs> 
The big um, L Brooks Park. Yeah. <laughs> That's mm, wonderful. Amen. And hey to David and Penny. And yes. thanks to David and Penny and all who are keeping the harvest co-op going yes. in a safely distanced way in this time. Yeah. We're getting a lot of help. That's great. Yay. Wonderful. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, great. Hey, John and Debbie, and hi, Hello. Annie and Julia and Nancy. Hello. Hi, Vicki. David and Carolyn. Hey, Glenn and Barb. Hey, yeah. hey Linda, Kelsey, and Jean. Hi, oh, good to see you. Hi, Mary. Hi, hey, 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 Kristen. Hi, Kristen. Hey, 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 Kristen.